Namaste. Welcome to Vedanta Society Berkeley's Christmas Eve program. Every year, this program is held in the sanctuary of the Vedanta Society with little ones, young ones and adults taking place in Christmas carols and lovely music. These are difficult times. Due to the relentless upsurge of COVID-19 and the strict lockdown procedures in place imposed by the state of California, we are unable to have a live event. This year's program is a recorded event. Thank you for your understanding. A special part of tonight's program are talks on Jesus Christ delivered by Reverend Father Melchizedek Kennedy, parish priest of St. Francis Xavier's Church. We'd like to thank Father Kennedy for his participation in the event. The Vedanta Society Berkeley wishes you a very Merry Christmas. Peace and joy to you. Namaste. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. My sisters and brothers of Jesus Christ, I welcome you all most sincerely at the Holy Sanctuary of the Vedanta Society Berkeley. This evening, to each and every one of you, I extend my prayerful best wishes for Christmas, filled every grace and blessings for yourselves and for your loving one as well. 24th December evening is very sacred and precious for the Ram Krishna order. In the life of Swami Vivekananda, 24th December evening is very significant in three ways. In all the centers of the Ramakrishna order, we celebrate 24th December, the Christmas Eve. The sacred birth of Jesus Christ. And it was started long time ago when one of the direct disciples Swami Trigunatita Nandaji who initiated to start this event in the Ramakrishna order. I hope most of you are familiar with the name of Swami Trigunatita Nandaji because he was one of the pioneer Vedantists who came in this country and established the first Hindu temple and the first Vedanta temple in USA, in San Francisco. But he initiated to start this event not after his arrival in this country. He started it long ago when the first monastery was in Barahanagar dilapidated house. It is in a corner of India near Calcutta. And they started this 24th December event by reading Bible. So this is the first event in our order. Obviously at that time the order was not established 
in a formal way. They started this Christmas Eve event and read the gospel from Luke. Then 2nd 24th December is very significant in the life of Swami Vivekananda. It is because on that day these young boys took the oath in front of the fire to leave their home and hearth to serve the humanity. There is a remote village near Calcutta which is called Atpur. There one of the direct disciples ancestral house was situated. After the passing away of Sri Ramakrishna, these young boys, actually they were teen at that time, were merged into very austere spiritual practice to realize God. At that time, one of the direct disciples' mother very old lady. She was the devotee of Sri Ramakrishna also. She invited this young group to her house to stay for some time. This young group, the nine young boys, they went there and they started staying there but not simply by practicing rigorous spiritual practices. They used to lit the fire and whole night they meditated circling around the fire. On one night, it was winter, on one night after their meditation, they wanted to read the Bible. They used to read the Bible quite often. So they started reading the Bible. And while reading the Bible, they were inspired by the renunciation, by the sacrifice of Jesus. They were so inspired that they took the oath, those nine young boys, they took the oath in front of the fire on that night that they will never enter into the household life. They will renounce the household and they will dedicate it, their life for the welfare of the humanity. And afterwards they found that it was 24th December. This is the second 24th December was very significant in Swami Vivekananda's life because the seed was sowed on that night in the remote village on 24th December of this order. Then the third 24th December was significant in Swami Vivekananda's life when he went to the last stone of India, the Cape Kumari, and sat there for three days in meditation. Afterwards, 
he wrote a letter to his brother disciples saying that I stuck into an idea while meditating on the last stone of India that, that is Cape Kumari. He got that idea on that night. It is very significant because the traditional monks of India they roam. They roam from door to door, beg and practice their spiritual practices. There were no any organizational setup or institution in India. The monastic concept of India was different. The monks they are like a bot. They move from one place to another place and they bake and eat. That is the traditional monastic life of India. But Swami Vivekananda hit upon a plan and he thought that thousands of thousands of monks are roaming throughout India and do their spiritual practices. Why don't these monks take a simple globe, some maps, some very simple arithmetic and go to the door of the poor of the poorest in the remote village and teach them Teach them simple education, teach them how to live a good life. And Swami Vivekananda afterwards implemented that concept, what he had in Konyakumari, the Cape Kumari on 24th December implement that idea into the operational order and in our order you can come with the monks they are not simply roaming here and there but they do dedicate their life for the good of humanity so this 324th december is very very significant in swami vivekananda's life and for our order because on these 324th evening the shape future shape of our order was determined and now please enjoy the uh, christmas carol I welcome you again on this sacred evening at the Holy Precinct of Vedanta Society Party.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There were shepherds coming in the countryside nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared to them, with the glory of the Lord shining around them. As they were terrified, the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I am here to give you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, a Savior has been born to you in David's town. He is Christ the Lord. Let us be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was surrounded by a great multitude of angels from heaven praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to all in whom he delights. When the angels had left them and gone back to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see what the Lord has made known to us. So they went hurriedly and found Mary and Joseph with a baby lying in a manger. On seeing this, they related what they had been told about the child, and all were astonished on hearing the shepherds. As for Mary, she treasured all these words and continually pondered over them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, I feel it's a great privilege for me to break the Word of God and share a few reflections on this Christmas Day celebration. One of the Indian great sages, Swami Vivekananda, once he said, Every child born in this world brings good news that God still loves the world. My dear brothers and sisters, I want to share with you an incident that took place in recent days. Mr. Raj, an angry, dynamic, joyful, happy, married man. Unfortunately, while he was traveling along with his wife and children, he met with an accident and he lost his wife and deliberately loved children. It was so sad. He felt the whole world lost and added to it because of this pandemic. Not only losing the family, he lost even his job. He became penniless. He lost everything. He came onto the streets, starving, wearing a shabby clothes, literally looking for someone or some help or assistant. And he couldn't find for the last two or three days. And he opted to end. And at that moment, he comes across a gentleman offering him breakfast. After eating, he thought for a while and said, 
thank you sir i wanted to end my life but now i know that my god is alive and he is there this world is very beautiful and there are loving people caring people sharing people i found a new hope hope to live and help others by me living on this earth i found meaning in my existence yes my dear brothers and sisters the whole purpose of christmas is nothing but the manifestation of divine love to the humanity john's gospel chapter 3 verse 6 we come across for god so loved the world that he sent his only son that everyone who believes in him may not die but have eternal life the feast of christmas is the feast of god sharing his son with us christmas is a celebration of god's sharing his love with you and me christmas reminds us that we have a god who loves us we have a god who forgives us and we have a god who provides us all our needs christmas is a celebration of god becoming human christmas is a celebration of human experiencing divine in human form christmas is celebration of god's manifestation of unconditional love christmas is a celebration of response of god's unconditional love by loving others christmas is a celebration of giving without any expectation christmas is a celebration of universal to everyone and it is not restricted for a particular group christmas is participating in the agape the love of god christmas reminds you and me the sharing love with others is our duty and invites us to fulfill the sacred obligation in word and deed remember my dear brothers and sisters every time we reach out to others jesus is reborn in our lives we should allow god to be reborn in our hearts and live every day let us face this question and answer it to conscience what does it profit me if jesus is born in thousands of graves all over the world and if he is not born in my heart question raised by pope alexander needs to be reflected sharing the compassionate love of jesus is the best christmas gift we can give to others now my dear brothers and sisters how do we understand christmas in this context book of genesis chapter 1 verse 26 we hear when god created everything was good but the goodness did not last long due to the disobedience of the first parents as a result the humanity 
lust, the beatific vision of God. Merciful God likes to see that the humanity enjoys the beatific vision. Hence, he promised. We see in Genesis 3rd chapter, verse 15, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. This woman referred here is the Blessed Virgin Mary and the offspring is Jesus Christ himself through whom we learn to experience heaven on earth by becoming another Christ. Christmas is trying to relive the intimacy with God by becoming another Christ. In this COVID time, everyone in one way or the other, directly or indirectly, are being affected. In a way, it has made an havoc in all areas of our lives, be it social, be it economic, be it religious, everywhere crisis has dominated. In this crisis, the Christmas, the birth of Christ, the light of the world brings a ray of hope. Nameless because John's Gospel, verse 10, chapter 10, verse 10, it says, I have come so that you may have life, life in abundance. My brothers and sisters, Christmas, as I reflect, means for us five things. Christmas is light, peace, joy, hope, love. Let us see each one individually and how does it have an impact in our lives in this time of Christmas. Light. The light of Christmas. The closer Christmas gets, the celebration becomes brighter. Lights are lit everywhere, especially in the stores and the market squares. The light becomes colorful. Now it draws attention for business to the people. But the brightest light of them all was over 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem. It wasn't the star in the sky, but the star that lay in the manger. The light of the universe came down and shone for a short while amongst his creation. The prophet Isaiah 9 chapter 2nd verse says, The people who wept in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them the light has shined. In describing this marvelous event, the apostle John said that Jesus, the Word, was in the beginning with God, and who was God, and in whom there was life, and that life was the light of men, and that this light then came down and dealt with you and me in this world. And so, the light of God himself is Jesus, who came down, shone upon every human being. For he himself said in John's Gospel, 18th chapter, 12th verse, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Jesus is using these phrases, light of the world and light of life, 
is to tell us that he is with us when we are in darkness due to this worldly troubles due to this family clutches in which we are caught up due to the societal problems or physical sickness or emotional stress and strain in which we are entangled or a situation of depression Jesus as light will illuminate each one of us from our own darkness he will lead us into light that we may rejoice and become light to others John's gospel 12th chapter 46 verse he says I have come as a light to shine in the star world so that all who put their trust in me will no longer remain in darkness my dear brothers and sisters while we turn on the light of the Christmas tree let us wish for the light of Christ to be in us a Christmas without light is not a Christmas let there be light in the soul let there be light in the heart let there be light of forgiveness to others let there be no hostilities let there be no darkness let there be the beautiful light of Jesus thus we become the light for the world which is groping in darkness can we become that light on this Christmas day the second point Christmas is joy the joy of Christmas on Christmas we celebrate the ultimate gift from our Creator from the one who truly knows us the best and loves us the most as the angels of the Lord proclaim to the shepherds in Luke's Gospel second chapter verse 10 and 11 do not be afraid I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people to you who is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Messiah the Lord scripture assures us that the birth of Jesus Christ is indeed a good news a good news of great joy for all people in material of which religion which race which caste which culture we belong we belong to God and therefore the birth of Jesus Christ is good news of great joy for everyone the joy of redeeming grace is the true gift of Christmas not an expensive presence that demand time and money they are called to transmit this joy to others how can we transmit this joy of Christ to others it is possible we are doing if we can give a smile with a kind gesture a smile help to others an acceptance of the one who hurt us let us give this joy and the joy given by us will definitely return to us with hundred measures let's my dear brothers and sisters remember the divine presence liberating joy will shine out in our lives if we can become joy to this world the third point the peace of christmas when the man violent jesus was born 2000 years ago the angels appeared in the sky to shepherds singing glory to god in the highest and peace on earth peace was coming to the world they were so excited 
they couldn't contain themselves. That's what Christmas is about. The coming of peace on earth into ourselves. Our country's father of our nation, Mahatma Gandhi, in his own words, he says, Child grew up to become the greatest non-violent resistor in the history of the world. He referred these words to Jesus. Jesus taught peace. Jesus lived peace. And Jesus blessed the peacemakers. And Jesus said, My peace is my gift to you. He took action to end injustice. And he did it in a non-violent way. And for his civil disobedience, he was brutally executed by the Roman Empire. And Jesus died forgiving his killers. When Jesus rose from the dead, he came back not seeking vengeance, nor retaliation, but once again offering his gift of peace. He said over and again after his resurrection, peace be with you. Now, you and I are called to practice non-violence and go forth as peacemakers. With peace, there is possibility of more prosperous future for all. Can we avail and manifest this peace and make prosperous in and around our vicinity and within ourselves? The fourth point for reflection. Christmas is hope. Hopelessness is such a dreadful thing in the society, especially in this time of COVID. One of the major messages of Christmas in this time is the hope found in Jesus Christ. He is God of hope. Hope is an expectation based on the promises of God. God's hope is enduring. God's hope cannot be frustrated. God's hope will never end. God's hope is eternal. Letter to Hebrews chapter 6 verse 19 we read, We have this hope as an anchor of the soul. Let's examine. Where is our hope? Is it in a relationship? Is it in money, wealth, possession? Is it in our jobs? Is it in our health insurance? Or is it in the promises of God? Hope is found in the person of Jesus Christ because he is the fulfillment of God's promises. Hope helps us keep beyond our present difficulties that we are facing right now or facing later. Many times there are people who have nothing but hope to live for. Over the years, I have observed many senior adults who have experienced much loss. They have lost their spouses. They have lost their health. They have lost many of their friends. The only thing that carries them is hope. Hope never disappears. Hope does not disappoint. 
There are many disappointments in our lives that we may encounter day in and day out. Perhaps people may let us down. Life sometimes lets us down to the steep down pit. Paul, writing to Romans chapter 5 verse 5 says, shares and encouraging words to you and me. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has given to us. Hope gives us a reason to live. Hope motivates us to keep going on and on and on in our life's journey. Without hope, we give up. Example, after the resurrection, on the journey towards Emmaus, two of his disciples lost hope. They had expected a from Jesus, and Jesus died. And Jesus was working with them, they couldn't recognize. The moment they recognized Jesus in them, a sparkling light, a ray of hope started coming. And they went with joy. Their hopelessness turned into full of hope, a new life, a newness began to shine in them. Similarly, in our lives, when every door is closed, as human point, we may think, I have nothing more. Enough is enough. And remember, when human fails, the fifth point for Christmas, Christmas is love. John's Gospel, third chapter, 16th verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, and whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Christmas is God's gift of love to you and me and to everyone. It is giving love. Christmas is generous love, grace love, gift love, unconstrained and unconditional love. His gift of love is free, undeserved, unexpected. And this gift of love expresses the vast, unmeasured, boundless love of God. God gave His only Son to participate in our humanity, in our human nature. He is born of a virgin, laid in a manger, bearing our frailty, our weaknesses, dependency, vulnerability, our weariness, our sorrows, our tiredness, our pain. God gave His Son to hunger and thirst. God gave His Son Jesus to anger and joy. God gave His Son Jesus to grief and loss. God gave His Son Jesus to trouble of soul and agony of body, excruciating pains He underwent. God gave His Son to sin, bearing so that he who knew no sin to be made sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. How much did God love you and me? God so loved that he gave his only son, he gave him to the manger, he gave Jesus his son, to the rejection of the people. He gave Jesus a son to the injustice of Pilate. He gave Jesus to the nails of cross. He gave his son Jesus to pierce the nail into his hands and the legs. He gave 
Jesus is son to the grave. In first letter John, fourth chapter, verse 10, 11. This is love. Not that we have loved God, but God loved us and sent his son to die for our sins. You can measure the love of God by the gift he has given. The gift is his son, his only son, the son whom he loves so dear to him. My brothers and sisters, we are here to experience that love, that unconditional love of Jesus, who is ever ready to manifest his unconditional love. We have experienced, can we share that love as a gift of Christmas to others? We have light, we have joy, we have peace, we have hope, and we have love in our love who cares for us. He gives us strength in our hard times, difficult times, painful times, rejected moments. And he wants us to look up to him in our daily prayer. When our circumstances and situations overwhelm us, don't worry. Rely on him. He will become every day the celebration of Christmas in our life with a ray of hope to enjoy the life that is given to us. To conclude this message, my dear brothers and sisters, birth of Christ reminds personally for you and me in the season three things. Let's remember the first one. Our life is God's gift. It is precious. We are called to celebrate our life on the day of Christmas. Because the book of Genesis chapter 1, 27, God created you and me in his own image and likeness. Hence, it is a precious gift that we have received. In the Psalm 139, verse 13 and 14, how beautifully God, David, describes the psalmist. For you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that fully well. Therefore, our life is beautiful. Hence, we need to celebrate life in Christ. The one who realizes this truth will be at peace, joy. Will not be upset, will not be disturbed, will not be worried. Because the second point we need to keep in mind is God is in control of our life. Psalm 27 verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my life and my salvation. The stronghold of my life. Whom shall I fear? Psalm 46 1. God is our refuge and strength ever present to help in our troubled situations. Prophet Isaiah 41.10 tells us, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. My brothers and sisters, our life, when it is in the hands of God, we have nothing to fear. The third last point for us to carry home on this celebration of Christmas is our life does not belong to us. It belongs to God. Isaiah 43, 1, it says, I caught you by name. You are mine. What a wonderful assurance we belong to God. Again, Ezekiel 18.4 says, Every life on earth belongs to me, be it a sinner or saint, 
rich or poor, small or big, slave or free, everyone belongs to God. You feel you are rejected, you feel you are abandoned, you feel you have no hope in life. Remember, you belong to God because you are precious. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, in this life, every second, God gives us an opportunity to manifest godliness in our relationship by becoming more human, more by loving, more by sharing. We become another Christ on this earth. Therefore, let us celebrate the true Christmas that God became man. He came to dwell among us. God is not distant. He is Emmanuel, God with us. He is not a stranger. The man you realize his presence in you, the more you become the light, the peace, the joy, the hope, and the love to yourself and to one another. May God bless you all and wish you all a happy, blessed, grace-filled Christmas. God bless you. Thank you and enjoy the celebration. Praise God.
Thank you.